So we've all heard the same thing. Engineering colleges want more girls. There are a lot of scholarships out there for us. Admittance rates can be higher. And more girls just need to be in STEM in general. We hear about this all the time. We all know it's an issue. We all know they're trying to fix it. But we don't really talk about why it's an issue in the first place. And you can't solve the problem only where it's occurring. You can't just get more girls into engineering by making it easier for them to get into engineering colleges. You have to look at the source. You have to look at how, starting as young as kindergartners, girls are treated differently, spoken to differently, and motivated differently. So when I was really little, I was in a Girl Scouts troop. We went camping once, and there were cabins. And I think we went horseback riding at one point. But the majority of the time, we were sitting around doing arts and crafts and making cards for our parents on holidays. I know Girl Scouts is supposed to be about empowerment and opportunity, and I acknowledge that a lot of troops do really cool things. But I don't hear often about Girl Scouts knowing how to tie 100 different kinds of knots or going backpacking for two weeks. Those were things I wanted to do when I was little in my Girl Scouts troop, and I never got the opportunity to. And a lot of girls don't. So when I was around 11, my brother joined this robotics team for high schoolers. And they build robots every year to play a game, and that's a whole other story. But there was only one girl on the team that first year. So a few years later, they started a middle school robotics team that was all girls. It consisted of me and my two friends, Maddie and Sophia. And it was just the three of us. Looking at the time, I didn't like that it was an all girls team because at that point in my life, and even now, most of my close friends had been guys. But looking back on it, I see how important it was. We weren't talked down to, like we were dumb girls that obviously couldn't build a robot or like that we were only good for creative things, which isn't a bad thing to be good at for the record. But we were able to work together equally and empowered. Now the whole purpose of this younger team was to bring more girls onto the previously mentioned high school robotics team that my brother was a part of. So when I moved up to ninth grade, we all joined this, my current robotics team. And I have been on it for three years now. My gender has only made it more challenging. I had projects taken from me freshman year because I was too insecure to stand up for myself. I was talked down to, and on a team of 30 to 40 kids, there were only 10 girls. I was scared to ask any questions and make any mistakes at the risk of looking dumb or seeming incompetent. These problems were shaped by my insecurities, which were caused by, partially by my personality and by the fact that society makes girls so susceptible to insecurity. This is where motivation comes into my story, though. I met adults, and I made a lot of friends that were like, you can do this. You know what you're doing, and you're just as competent as everyone else here. So I got my act together, and now I am mechanical lead on my team, which means nothing to most of you. So I'm going to phrase it as I'm the boss of half my team and everyone that actually builds the robot, which means I get to boss people around a lot. And I still have issues with insecurity and confidence. But every time I tell somebody what to do, or realize I do know what I'm talking about, or I'm like, yeah, I know where that tool is, I get a little more confident and a little more sure of myself. The only reason I made it to where I am today, and I'm trying to be where I want to be, is because I was given the opportunity, the empowerment, and the motivation at a young age to pursue the career and be who I want to be. So, these are just a few of the experiences in my life that have made me realize the divide, that have showed me the causes of the gender gap in engineering. I've narrowed my point down to three hits, all of which I have mentioned so far. Opportunity, empowerment, and motivation. All of these things are necessary to close the gap, and they aren't always given to girls. Oftentimes, girls at a young age, girls aren't given the opportunity to learn more about engineering or STEM-related fields. And if they are given the opportunity, Oftentimes, they aren't given the empowerment. They're in a position where they can build something, like a robot, and they don't feel like they have the ability to. And even if they are given the opportunity and the empowerment, it's still hard because there are always going to be people that don't consider us as capable or skilled or equal, which is where motivation comes in. Girls need the motivation to push past the obstacles and everything that stands in the way and do what they want to do. Now, this all starts at a really young age. It's more than a career, and it's more than a gender. It's about how when girls and boys are being raised, they're already being split into their roles. I'm going to broaden the spectrum a little bit and talk about chores. 
So there's a Times article about how boys are paid more allowance, even though they are often given less chores. And there's another article by Washington Post that confirms this, and in addition says the girls are given 50% more chores than boys. Now, this is partially due to the fact that girls do develop faster. But what this results in is boys having more time to play, do fun activities, and socialize. And because a lot of these chores are domestic, the girls have, they have less time, and they have lower confidence in their ability to do physical work. I'm not going to say this is all a cause and effect relationship, that chores cause low self-esteem, but it makes sense that there's some correlation between more domestic chores and lower confidence in your ability to do physical work. And it starts when kids are just kids. But it's also much more than that. It's a very complicated issue. It's also society, and we all know that. We hear it all the time. Women face so many obstacles, making it to where we want to be, especially in STEM careers, but even outside of that. Society constantly makes us aware of our insecurities and our flaws. It shapes who we think we need to be. Teachers, when they need a few books, are always like, hey, can I get a few strong boys? Comments are made. Adding like a girl to anything makes it an insult. Our gender constantly faces scrutiny and criticism for anything we do. Any mistakes we make are immediately magnified. Any power we have is easily dismissed. And any anger or frustration we express is immediately connected to hormones. And it's up to us to change this and to make our voices heard and make it easier for future generations of women to be considered equal among their male counterparts. I know I just went on a tangent about irrelevant things like chores and society, but from my perspective, all of these problems with gender inequality start in the same place, from the wage gap to the gap in engineering. It's when we're kids. It's when I'm in a Girl Scouts troop making a card for my mom and my brother is learning how to use a knife at the same age. It's when I'm being told I can't do something because I'm a girl, or I run like a girl, or I hit like a girl. It's when my brother is given a higher allowance and the harder chores, like mowing the lawn and cleaning the gutters. And we all start out the same, boys and girls, but as we grow, we get split into our categories, our genders. And when we think about what careers we want to pursue, sometimes not all doors seem open for us. It's hard to want to become a mechanical engineer when you've never even used a screwdriver. And it's hard to speak up in a group of guys in an engineering class when you've never been given the power to do that. And it's hard to want to push past all these obstacles and deal with it and be who you want to be when you've never been given the motivation to do so. At this point in our lives, most of us are in high school. And we've already passed the point where our interest would be sparked in engineering or another field that women have trouble succeeding in. So it might seem like it's too late for anything that I've said to matter, but it's not. If the opportunity to be who we want to be doesn't present itself, we can find it. And if the motivation to be successful isn't there, we can create it ourselves. And if empowerment isn't around every corner, we can surround ourselves with people and mindsets that remind us that we can do whatever we want to and that our gender won't hold us back. Thank you.